He now holds a cabinet rank position as the chairman of 5T, a charter of governance emphasizing transparency, technology, teamwork and time leading and transformation. Some say that he is the chief minister in waiting. Well, he just could well be that. Let's hear it from the man himself. Please join me as I welcome Mr. V.K. Pandian, who is the chairman 5T Odisha for a session titled P2P, Odisha's new mantra, in conversation with News 18's Zaka Jacob. Welcome. Let's have a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, there are bureaucrats and there are bureaucrats and there are politicians and there are politicians. We are extremely privileged and honored to be having Mr. V.K. Pandian. He was just telling us in the green room that this is his first live interview on any news platform. So can we have a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you. Sir, it's very difficult to get a chance to interview you because you've always been sort of behind the scenes and, you know, operating, of course, for the chief minister. Uh, what, what made you decide to take that plunge? You are now right front and center in public life. You've decided to uh, enter politics full-fledged. Uh, what, what made you make that switch? I am with the Chief Minister of Odisha for the last uh, 12 years in his office. And before that, I used to be the collector of his district called Ganja. I was uh, inspired by him. The first reason I would say is that I was totally inspired by his commitment to the cause of people, commitment to public service. But uh, one year back, if some of my friends have asked, or somebody has asked my friends that whether Mr. Pandian will join politics, everyone would have laughed. I would have also laughed about that. After COVID, uh, the grievance cell of chief minister's office was closed for, uh, as a precautionary measure. So after that, Chief Minister wanted that uh, we should go to the villages, we should go to the people and do grievance. So one year back, we started that exercise of touching all the assembly constituencies and uh, blocks for grievance redressal of people. So when I went there, I realized that uh, there is a strong connect with people and uh, I'm not being treated like a bureaucrat there. <laughs> it was a little more than a bureaucrat. I was embarrassed in some places. So. I came and told the Honorable CM, and he also saw the videos of people, how they respond to me, how they connect with me, the emotions overflowing. And then the inner call, calling came that, okay, maybe I should not be covered by that screen of bureaucracy. I should come out and help my guru, the Honorable Chief Minister of Odisha, as a nice disciple. So t tell us a little bit more about your guru, your father figure. I mean, he will by the middle of this year, become the longest ever serving chief minister in the history of India. He's already gone past Jyoti Basu. I think he'll go past Pawan Chamling by the middle of this year. It has never happened in the history of India. And you have seen firsthand why it has happened or what makes him tick. So tell us, I what think, is the success uh, of his longevity? I don't know throughout the world you have any parallel of uh, democratically elected leader continuing in a space as popular as the Chief Minister of Odisha and winning election after election with a higher margin yeah. instead of anti-incumbency having pro-incumbency and uh, he is now going to touch two and a half decades. <laughs> he started in a decade when newspapers were ruling the roost, then came internet, then social media. So all these eras of public scrutiny he has stood mm -hmm. and uh, his popularity ratings are the highest in the country for any chief minister. So I would say that uh, one of the main reasons for his success is that uh, he doesn't see politics as politics. He sees it as public service. And people also don't see him as a political leader. They see him as somebody who is there to serve them. I think that is the connect he has with people and which has made him very popular. What is the connect that you have? Of course, you've worked under him as a bureaucrat, you were his private secretary, you were district collector in his own district before that. But more than that, at a personal level, clearly something has inspired you to make that political plunge. It's a blessing to work with a great soul like him. I consciously use the word soul. It's more of values. 
It's not about a great leader doing great work. Many people will do great work. There may be great administrators, there may be great planners. This chief minister, Mr. Navin Patnaik, has a great soul. I consider it as a blessing to be with him for more than a decade. And I thought as a uh, disciple, I should try and do something for him at this point of time to help him reach out to the people. That's my only objective right now. So for such a popular chief minister, many would ask, why is he then allying with the BJP? When what is this pressing Never, I don't think in Indian politics you have seen an alliance between a ruling party and the main opposition party. So something must have happened. Okay. Uh, why somebody joins an alliance? Somebody joins an alliance because they want to win elections. Somebody joins an alliance because they want to have an impact in the electoral map. Here is a chief minister who is so popular in the state and he gets three-fourth majority every time, Mr. Navin Patnaik. The recently concluded panchayat elections, he won symbol election. It's based on party symbol. He won 90% of the seats. And uh, the second party was 5% seats, BJP. So Mr. Navin Patnaik doesn't need an alliance to come back to serve the people. He doesn't need an alliance. You're saying I, BJP needs I, an alliance? No, I would say the same thing about Mr. Narendra Modi, the Honorable Prime Minister of India, whatever surveys you are showing, whatever others are showing, that he is going to become the Prime Minister of the country. Mr. Navin Patnaik is going to the Chief Minister of the state, undoubtedly, and Mr. Navin, Mr. Narendra Modi is going to be the Prime Minister. How I put it is, it is beyond, there are some things beyond politics. It is a mark of great statesmanship, that's how I put it, that two great leaders, wanting to come together for a greater cause. It, 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 has, it, has, it has significance as two, two great uh, people coming together as, as a mark of statesmanship. It has nothing to do with politics. That's how I see it, that's how I put it, and even the chief minister thinks that way. So you said in the- It has no, pol it has no electoral value either for BJP or for BJD. No, you, uh, earlier in the f first part of the answer, you said, why do parties align with each other? They want to win elections, they want to change the electoral map. So is it that BJP needs BJD more or BJD needs BJP more? It, uh, BJP doesn't need, uh, B, BJD doesn't need BJP to form government in the state and BJP may not need BJD to form government in the center. That's why I made it very clear that it is to do with two individuals who share a great friendship amongst each other and they see some things are beyond politics and that is where you see a rare mark of uh, statesmanship. I consciously use the word statesmanship. It is nothing to do with politics. It's beyond politics. So, so where is the status of that alliance right now? Because PM came, I think, earlier this month. He pra praised Naveen Patnaik as a Lokpriya Neta. But we haven't heard anything ever since. I think if anything happens, we'll all get to know. No, no, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> no, no, better to ask I, than you. We'll all get to know if something happens. But I, I, I told the logic behind this, whatever talk has happened also, I told the logic behind it. It has nothing of electoral significance either to Odisha or to the country. It is more to do with statesmanship. Okay. Talking about statesmanship, clearly Naveen Babu is a statesman in his own right. Like I said, he has already gone past Jyoti Basu's record. Uh, and if he wins this election, which, like you said, is almost a certainty, he will become the longest-serving chief minister in the history of India. Uh, we have called this session P2P. So depending on which way you want to see it. Poverty to prosperity, Orissa transforms. That, that, that's the way you would like to see it. We would like to see it as from Every... Patnaik to Pandian. No, no, no. So please tell us, are you Mr. Naveen Patnaik's political successor? I don't think uh, I should answer this. The people of Odisha will answer it. And uh, I succeed his values. I succeed his hard work. I get inspired by his sincerity, commitment, and keeping politics away from public service and doing service to the people. That's how these are values I have imbibed from the chief minister. Politics can come later on whenever whatever people think, it's fine. But the reason people are asking this is because the BJD, like, some other parties, we've seen that in the history of Indian politics, where succession has always become a bit of a, 
a dicey situation. We've seen that with ADMK, we've seen that with Shiv Sena. So in the BJD, there is no obvious political successor. Are you the obvious political successor? Let me put it this way. The chief minister is so popular and he is so meticulous in doing everything. He has transformed the state of Odisha from where it was and what it is now. And BJD is the vehicle which he created to transform the state. Such a futuristic thinking chief minister who holds people of Odisha in his heart will definitely have planned out something for the BJD which will be rocking as always he does. But he's not shared that with you. I think he tells always that people of Odisha will decide who, who will succeed him. We all follow that. In fact, uh, when somebody asked Biju Babu when he was alive, who is going to succeed you, he also told the same thing that people of Odisha will decide. But, Finally, uh, in democracy, one bows to the peoples. So, talking about your political debut, uh, just as you decided that you're going to get into politics, you also said that you're not going to be fighting the elections. You're not going to get into electoral politics. Why? I was very clear when I took this decision, I'm going to help the chief minister come back with three-fourth majority to serve the people again. That's my one and only objective right now. I see only that in my eyes. In politics, obviously, you know, you'll be the subject of scrutiny by a lot of people, your political opponents, by the people of the state. When they uh, attack you with the outsider tag, how do you respond to that? I know that um, last, last three, four years, I have been the central point of attack of everyone in Odisha politics. <laughs> Most of the opposition parties attack me. So that's part of the game. And uh, whether I succeed or not, it's up to the people of Odisha to decide. But, but when, when they say that you're originally not from there, you're from Tamil Nadu. They have to, they have to come and see some of the meetings which I have with the people and the emotions which they pour out when they see, when they interact or when they, when they talk to me, I think that will clarify how they hold me, whether they hold me as one of theirs or whether they hold me as an outsider. It's the people of Odisha who finally decide. But, I mean, you're also a fluent Odia speaker by virtue of your bureaucratic career, of course. You're married to a, a Odia, a native. But, but beyond that, for people to accept somebody who is from a different state, I mean, I, oh, the only comparable example I can think of, and pr probably you'll relate to this, is MGR, you know, coming from one state and contesting in another state, even Jalalitha to an extent. What is it about our people in India, in different states, that they wholeheartedly give love to even someone who may not be originally from their place, but are considered one of their own? People are very smart and intelligent. If Navin Patnaik has succeeded so many years in Odisha, it's because people see his clear heart. He has heart in the right place. And they know that this guy wants to change Odisha, transform Odisha, and he is spending every minute of his time for Odisha and its people and its growth. So when people are so intelligent and smart, they will judge what is what and who is who. And that's how I think the connect which I have with people is the same. The connect that you have with the people is the same because people believe that you are wanting to do this as a service and not... Uh, but that's what all politicians say. So time will tell that. <laughs> whether I have meant what I say or whether I have some other hidden agenda, <laughs> time will say. But I leave it to the people to judge whether I stand by the service mind which I got from the chief minister. So you did say that Odisha has transformed, no doubt, in the last 20, 25 years. It has transformed as a state. Uh, and I want to deal with both ends of it. Uh, at the welfare end, at the lower end, obviously there are various programs that Naveen Babu has launched from Kalia uh, to the BSKY uh, program, the Mission Shakti. Now, over the last year or so, there has been this whole thing in politics, this whole narrative and counter-narrative that many of these things are freebies or ravedies. How would you respond to that? There are some things which one should uh, call it as responsibilities of a welfare state. Health, education, taking care of food security of the vulnerable people. All these one should, uh, even United States does, take care of health, take care of education. You have public schools, 
you have public hospitals. What the Chief Minister has done is, why there should be a quality difference between a public school and a private school. He invested in public schools, transformed the public schools, like private schools are better than private schools. I'll be happy to share that we have about 8,600 high schools in the state. We have transformed all the 8,620 high schools in the state. We don't have blackboards in these schools. We have smart boards like these digital boards in these schools. And we have science labs, class science labs, modern laboratories, libraries, e-libraries at high school level. So he wanted to empower the people of Odisha to make them dream big for their children. Because 70, of the, 70 to 80 percent of the children will always be dependent on public schools. So he transformed the public schools and made it as good or better than private schools. He also transformed the hospitals, public hospitals, government hospitals, as good as or better than private hospitals. So this is where he spends money. So health, education, food security, these are things which any government should do for its population. And people are happy about it. And if you want to take the state to the next level, 70% of the population who are dependent on public institutions should have the best access to public institutions. When you do that, you actually empower the people and make them dream big. That's when a state will go forward. I also want to ask you about the uh, Sri Mandir Parikrama project, which is the temple heritage corridor project, the restoration of the Puri Jagannath temple, as well as other temples you were telling us a short while back. There are 10,000 temples that have been revived and restored in the state. How would you respond to the charge that why should a secular state be in the business of restoring or reviving temples? I think it's part of our culture. Temples reflect, temp temples are an integral part of your culture. It reflects your history. You draw strength from your, you draw strength from your faith you have on these temples. You get peace there. So it is but natural for a government to honor the faith of people. In a democracy, people's faith is reflected in vote. When you are voted to serve them, it's important that you honor their faith. If Muslims have faith in mosque, restore their mosque, restore their burial grounds. If Christians have faith in churches, restore their churches which are broken during um, uh, cyclone. Orissa is prone for cyclone. If Hindus have faith in temples, restore their temples. If Sikhs have faith in Gurdwara, do that. And we have a huge tribal population who have faith in their tribal gods. The chief minister has restored almost every uh, symbol of uh, religious institution of the tribals as well. So it is honoring the faith of people. So you call it a secular, I call it a spiritual governance, which the chief minister believes in. It's a spiritual governance. It's not secular governance. You have to run the extra mile to take care that people's faith is honored. You don't think this will be a point of difference between you and the BJP because you split the alliance in 2009 after the Kandamal riots? That is a communal issue. That is a difference between com being communal and spiritual. Here the chief minister has protected, preserved, conserved religious institutions of all religions. That's what I meant by spiritual, spiritual governance. You honor the faith of people. I also want to talk about, and of course, a lot of our viewers are uh, um, well acquainted with this. Orisha has, of course, become a big hub, a big center for sports and sports promotion, particularly hockey. You've got world-class stadiums now in Raurkela, in Bhuvaneshwar, uh, the Hockey World Cup. You hosted the Hockey World Cup. What explains Odisha and particularly your chief minister's love for, uh, for sports. I believe you are also a, a sports uh, Yeah, I'm a also from sports candidate. hostel. I was trained to be a professional athlete. I left, uh, maybe in, I was a middle distance runner and left halfway through <laughs> because my father asked me whether you want to continue as a sports person and end up in railway stations as TTE after playing nationals or you want to go a <laughs> little further. That was the ecosystem which sports has. Unfortunately, we, fortunately we, we have improved on, a bit on it, but still a long way to go for India to make our sportsmen into professional sports. And uh, regarding your question about uh, hockey and Odisha, uh, half of the Indian team at one point of time, or 30% of the Indian team, had players from Odisha. People of uh, Odisha are in uh, love with hockey, many parts of the country. But in Odisha, hockey is, uh, hockey is celebrated. 
you will get, even for local matches, you will get such huge crowds for hockey. Our chief minister is also a hockey, used to be a hockey player, he used to yes. be a goalkeeper. And uh, his father had told a very interesting anecdote, linking hockey and the Indian national movement. Linking when hockey India, and the Indian freedom I, movement. Indian freedom movement, right. So when India was not conceived as a country, we were fighting for our independence. The only place where India was representing us, India was in Olympics, even before independence. British India, whatever you call yeah. it. So the gold medals used to come from hockey. When India was an idea, we were fighting for an independent India. At that point of time, India was honored at a world stage because of hockey. So that is something which Biju Patnaik, who used to be a freedom fighter, late Biju Babu, he had told his son, Naveen Patnaik, that we all got inspired, that India, at least somewhere it is making a wave, at least in, through hockey, it <laughs> made an impact for itself, that we are getting gold in Olympics. So that is something which gave that emotional connect to our chief minister. And people of Odisha are deeply in love with hockey. So he thought that we should take up hockey seriously. And we are the only state perhaps in the world who is supporting a national team. A provincial government supporting, sponsoring a national team. Generally, a national team is sponsored by corporates. The chief minister wanted that we let send a message. This game has contributed for, at least indirectly during the Indian national movement, to make Indians feel proud about something when they were fighting the British. So perhaps that is the reason why he took it up as an emotional thing. And it gelled well with uh, Odisha. All right. So, in fact, Odisha sponsors both the men's and women's hockey teams. So, can senior we have a and junior. Senior and junior. So, that is an incredible thing. It's generally corporates who sponsor teams, but here you have a state government sponsoring. So, finally, Mr. Pandey. And after 38 years, 40 years, India won a medal in last Olympics in Beijing. Correct. After Odisha sponsored. Of course, the credit goes to our players, the, sp the support team and everyone. But Odisha had a small role in that. Odisha had a small role in India getting a medal after three decades. So finally, is Mr. Pandian, the middle distance runner, ready for the long distance marathon of politics? I take one day at a time. <laughs> I don't see anything long term. In human life, you should take one day at a time. Not then, it, then you are stressful. This is something which I learned from our chief minister. Very spiritual. Take next minute. Live okay. with, live in the moment, present moment. So for this day and for the last uh, 25 minutes, Mr. Pandian, thank you very much thank for joining you, us Jai here Jagannath. at the Rising thank Bharat you. Summit. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have a round of applause? Thank you so much for that very important advice. Live each day. And that was Odisha's influential bureaucrat.